Hi, my name is Dylan, and we are in our third video in a series of videos about importing your models, your physical miniatures, into Tabletop Simulator. In our last video, we did some uh, work on our wizard model here in Blender, and we are going to continue right, uh, right from where we left off. So we have one more thing to do in Blender, and that is create a collider for this guy. So the collider defines the, uh, the area, like the physical space that will collide with other objects uh, in Tabletop Simulator. I like to make the collider significantly smaller than the model. Makes it easier to base the models however I need to base them. Uh, this wizard is probably not going to be used in a rank and file game, but if you had something like uh, pikemen or cavalry with lances, you know those types of models, uh, you can have. You might find it difficult to uh, rank them up and, and base them how you want to uh, if you use the default collider. So uh, if you don't create your own collider and add your own collider to the model, the default collider is just a box, right? A, uh, um, what would that be? A rectangular solid, <laughs> right? A box uh, that is essentially the size of the model, right? Something that bounds uh, the complete size of the model. So it, just imagine if, uh, if our little wizard here had a staff or something that was sticking way uh, out in front of them, then that box would be so large it would it would be you know a box that that included like uh, uh, that staff and whatnot, and it would make it difficult to place him close to uh, scenery objects. Right, uh, it would make it difficult to make to uh, to place him closer to uh, to other models, uh, etc. So we need our own collider, and we can do that pretty easily just by making a tiny little box. So what I'm going to do, I'm going to hit Shift A. That brings up uh, Shift A for Add in Blender, and I want a cube. And here is a cube. That is a very large cube, so we need to make our cube much, much smaller, right? Let's make this 0.02. Let's see what that looks like. Whoa, that's a tiny cube. Let's make it uh, maybe 0.2. Uh, that's pretty good. Again, I like the collider to be uh, quite small. Uh, let's just place the cube. Uh, let's get the cube a little higher. So we want the cube to be in the right place in, uh, in relation to our model. If we left the cube where it is, then if we added the collider to the wizard, he would be hovering, you know, about this much off of the ground because the collider is down here and uh, it, uh, when you place him on your tabletop simulator table, uh, it's the bottom of the collider that's going to sit on the table and he will be hovering. We don't want that, right? So we need to just, uh, much as we did with the with the wizard right we had to put his feet down on the ground we're going to move the collider up a bit uh, so that it is flat on the ground as well so we'll use one of our orthogonal views here click on the y just g for grab move uh oh let's hit z for the z axis and let's move this up so it's nice and even okay so there is our collider pretty much ready to go very simple very simple to to do if, uh, if this is the first 3d object you've made well congratulations right <laughs> so let's take our our collider and we need to save that so we have the collider selected which is great we're going to go over here to file export obj and I'm going to put this in a special place that I have just for colliders. And we'll call this the tutorial collider. And this collider is really reusable. So you'll be able to use this collider with, with really any model that you make. So let's export our collider. Um, going up here, same presets again. You can set the presets, 
show you the geometry here because again this is important we want selected only right we have our cube selected we don't have the wizard selected objects is obj's uh, the path mode here is good uh, z up y forward apply modifiers write the normals triangulate the faces this is these are the settings uh, that you need for this let's export let's um let's go into tabletop simulator now and see uh, see how we did with this okay here we are in tabletop simulator and we are going to uh, click create single player i'm going to go up here search for a uh, table I mean, any old blank table is, is good enough. I'm going to use the flex table. This is a, a Mr. Stump creation. Uh, he does a lot of cool uh, tutorial stuff for tabletop simulator. So definitely check that guy out if you have not already. I'm going to go up to objects, components, custom. Uh, we're going to do a model. I'm going to drag and drop this. Go to model. Let's find our wizard just a blended wizard I'm going to select him you want to pick cloud here uh, cloud will allow the model to be downloaded by other uh, players if you're playing a, a game with other people if you pick local it's just saved to your local uh, computer and other players wouldn't be able to see the model so we're going to select cloud here upload let's get the texture on him Again, cloud upload I like to use generic some of these other things have some other properties like the figurine wants to like automatically stand itself up uh, I don't like that for what I do so I just pick generic down here and we are going to add that collider but I want to show you what it's like without the collider and we are going to change the material but I want to show you the difference so let's just import him right now here he is here's our wizard it looks pretty good, but he's all shiny, which is a little strange. That's because of the material. Click on custom, go to material. He's plastic right now, and we are going to change him to cardboard. So the difference between plastic and cardboard as far as tabletop uh, simulator is concerned has to do with the specular intensity. It's how reflective the model is. So uh, we changed him to cardboard, click import, and there he is. Looks pretty good. Uh, nice and uh, fairly matte. He's not all shiny anymore. Editing here, we've got a little barking dog in the corner. Uh, he's not being very cooperative with our video making, but uh, hopefully we'll get through that. So uh, now we've changed the material. Let's uh, let's uh, demonstrate what I mean by that collider. Let me get rid of this because we don't need it anymore. I'm just going to copy and paste him. So we can't see the collider, it's invisible, but there is a default collider on it right now, which is uh, essentially a big old cube or a big old um, box that's the size of the model. So I can actually stack these guys on top of each other, right? Because uh, their, 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 their physical presence is, is a big old rectangular solid, right? So let's uh, move them off here and let's replace one of these guys uh, replace the collider on one of these guys with the one we made. So again, I did a right click, um, went to custom, let's go to model, collider, and let's get the collider that we made. Let's do the tutorial collider. And again, cloud here, upload import out saying do you want to update the other object that looks the same to tabletop simulator i'm going to say no because i want to demonstrate the difference so i'm going to click cancel on this let me click harder there you go good job dylan uh, okay so he has this model has the default collider and this one has the new uh, custom collider so if i pick him up i should be able to put him on top of this one right they stack like that again because he is a big old box and if I grab this one though he has a tiny little collider down uh, right in the center between his uh, shoes there so let's pick this guy up if I try to stack him on top of him see he goes right through and we can kind of see where the uh, that little box is again it's invisible but it's there 
So again, why am I obsessed with tiny colliders? Well, um, with the wizard, as I said before, it might not make as much of a difference, but it just helps when you are um, moving models uh, in close proximity to each other, right? Let's say we put them on a little base, right? And we want to go base to base with another model if it's like this, this guy, right? So if we have two of these who have the default collider, they can only get so close to each other because those colliders, well, they do what colliders do, which is collide, right? And you just can't, uh, you can only get so close, right? But our other wizards, we can get them pretty close to each other. We could, uh, uh, if we wanted a phalanx of wizards, right? Uh, we could definitely do that and uh, nothing stopping us. We could just uh, rank these guys right up. I don't know of any games that, uh, that organize wizards as a sort of a, a, a phalanx, maybe uh, Macedonian wizards. I don't know, but hey, we've got the option. Again, uh, this is more important if you're doing um, uh, like a rank and file game, like your ADLGs or Mortem and Gloriums, my favorite uh, of those right now. DBA, uh, Warhammer Fantasy Battles, whatever, those sort of uh, rank and file mass battle games. Uh, having tiny colliders on the models really helps out with that. But I think it helps everything, right? It helps out with uh, being able to get the models close to each other when you want to do that. We've got our wizard, he's ready to go. Um, if I wanted to save this for later, there are a couple different things. One, I could just make a mod, right? I could make a mod open, you know, I could uh, uh, upload a mod, new mod to the uh, Steam Workshop and share it with everybody. And that's great, you should do that, right? The more of us who scan our models and do this photogrammetry process, the more models we get in Tabletop sim Simulator, the better it is, I think, for the whole community. And also, uh, you don't have to do that, though maybe you're still, this is what I do, right? So I don't usually release a mod until I have a number of models, right? Different models, not, not just a phalanx of wizards, right? Well, maybe I try to add, oh, five or 10 or 20 other models to my little fantasy collection here. Maybe I'll release that as a public mod. But while I'm working on it, I'll just save it, right? So let me just go here, save. Again, having a, a folder structure is good, but for, uh, for the, our purposes, I'm just going to save it here. I'll call it Fantasy Work in Progress. Fantasy Models Work in Progress. And I will go ahead and let's actually, I'll put it in my Ancient Armies folder, sure. And I will save that. And so I can come back uh, to that same save game and continue working on my mod, keep adding models, uh, et cetera, et cetera. Okay, so thanks for, uh, thanks for staying with me if you, <laughs> if you watched all of these videos. Uh, again, appreciate your, your patience. I'm definitely new to making videos, editing videos, messing with audio settings, all of that. I'm learning as I go, or I don't really know what I'm doing. Uh, so apologize for any uh, little glitches along the way, any uh, pops or clicks or little errors in the audio and whatnot. Um, I'm, again, just sort of finding my way with this stuff. But uh, hopefully you found this was helpful. And if you have any questions at all, uh, you can just ask them in the comments. And I will most likely uh, respond and help you out if I can. Thanks.